Good morning, folks, and welcome to the year 2022. I hope he, uh, everyone had a good Christmas. Santa Claus was good to you, and a safe new year, and everybody's happy and healthy this year. So that's the third time I've tried that intro, because Santa Claus, actually my, my kids all chipped in and got me a new GoPro. I love the fact I got a new GoPro. I hate this GoPro because I don't like change. I don't like learning new stuff because my brain at 60 years old doesn't retain a lot. So you've got to show me sub something 11 times over and over. And if say two weeks of time frame in between that passes and I don't use it, I forget it again. You got to start all over. So I just got used to my other one after a year 96 videos um does that seem right 96 videos and 570 subscribers i don't know i don't know that doesn't sound normal i i click on and i see channels where old people fall over and they get three million views in a, in a month but hey i'm not hating i'm, I'm a little jealous but We'll do this. I got a goal. I had a goal at the very beginning of the uh, 1,000. I'm not quitting on it. Not quitting yet, but we'll take it uh, as it goes. But we'll continue to try to get that 1,000. Today, we are removing two above ground oil tanks in the base, no, in the garage. And we're going to install one. 275 gallon 10 gauge Granby with a bollard with a protective bollard that's what um, the state of New York requires if the tank is in a traffic deemed area so we'll bring you along on that we'll have a little fun maybe throw a challenge in there you know do what we do it's about 5 30 in the morning right now it's 22 degrees Hopefully the boys are on their way in. I'm going to head into the shop now. Get the vehicles up and running. Get them out. And we'll see you when they get here. Okay. We have a correction. It is not a 2275 removal. It's one. There she is. That's Corey doing the carpentry dismantle work. USA. We're just going to clean our area um, because these tanks are so old. We'll cut this with a sawzall so we can unscrew it and then we'll put the sawzall in here and we'll cut a large opening. But before we do that, we always go down underneath and rub our hand along the belly just to see if it's flaking because a lot of times once this thing starts shaking, It'll let go. So we look pretty good down here. There's no real issues. Look at the way the legs are squatting out though. Supposed to have flanges on the bottom of those. For that exact reason. Okay boys, what do we got here? Sacred Heart. Sacred stomping grounds. Mine? Ours, yeah. Oh, Monroe? Yep. I'll throw this back on. All right, and there's that's what happens when you don't paint. Drives me crazy. But we'll come right out through those same holes. And that's it. This is just, we'll tie into here. That's all we'll run underground. It is PVC sleeve, the one line system. So I think she only has about a quarter of a tank. Yeah. yeah. So if that stuff looks good, we'll. We'll transfer her for her, but she's okay with not transferring and we prefer people don't either All right boys, let's get at it yep. you get me So let's check out Craig's driving skills. This is tight. I Don't think he knows I'm taping him Plus there's a little edge lip on that No way. He don't oh maybe. Maybe. Yeah. 
Maybe. Oh. oh, come on, come on, come on. I'll just go for it. Dude, that's the new generation. It's so no stop now. Go. We'll repair the damage. That's what stinks about these trailers. Just that little bit of an incline becomes a problem for us. That's why I always say, I was just thinking about a box truck. It's a hassle sometimes. But then the box truck, you got to register, you got to fuel, you got to put tires on, you got to maintain, it breaks down. And that's all it is, is a box truck. This trailer, I hooked to a Mason dump truck. Now I've got all the, the usage of a Mason dump truck to bring dirt, take out dirt, take out tanks. And it pulls the trailer, which doesn't require gasoline. And that's what we call a one swipe, boys. That wasn't bad, Craig. What? That wasn't one swipe. I didn't stop and reset. You ab you I liar! Know. You pull forward, didn't you? No, you didn't he? It's on tape. I opened the window and said, "Check my hitch." Never pull forward. That's a one swipe. Okay. So you be humble. That's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> That's ugly. And I have a kink in the neck. Oh well, rising above. Look at the progress already, folks. Yeah, don't need me. Mike is taking out. Where's that lighting, Sam? Yeah, yeah. Get that lighting for me. Hey, do you have a, uh, my charger for it? Why would I have your charger? Seriously, think about it. Uh, you're think it's about on it. camera. I don't want it. Oh, say why. Say why. Because your GoPro died. You took it from me one day. I hate this GoPro. It's just another thing now. <laughs> no, there's, there's, uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. That's what that is? Yeah. So I have it over my truck. But does it need to be charged? Maybe it should have been charged prior to coming out to the job. Maybe. I see we've got our second pump. It's not the new one though. Alright, we're unstrapping the tank. But first we gotta get this thing out of here. Side. Yeah, that wasn't the lighting I was talking about. You want the big boy? I do. Why not let the viewers see what we're doing, right? And since I paid, what, 300 bucks for that setup? We'll get you some better lighting. Now we've got some viewing pleasure. So instead of cutting it, they're just going to back these out of the 90s. Sam opening the bungs where we'll figure out the configuration we put the vent alarm sight gauge two inch plug the duplex for the return and suction line and then the fill it's 
it's all happening fast. Okay, Ori, Corey is going to make the cut now. She has quite a bit of oil. Okay, we're transferring the usable fuel now. It's not very exciting to watch, it's kind of like watching paint dry. Yeah. All right, so we're getting to the bottom. Just so you can see the amount of sludge in a 275. That's why that drop tube stays three to four inches off the bottom. So you can imagine the pressure when the oil man puts his nozzle up there. As it comes in, it all swirls around. It kicks that all up. Why you shut that burner switch off? Yeah. Mikey is skilled at this. Don't give it too much credit. But there's a skill to everything, even if you're sweeping the floor. There's a skill on how to work a, a broom, believe it or not. See how he's trying to get fancy. Why? That's what I always do. I know. I know. What is that? Do we have no challenges? We should have done a challenge there, kids. And there's a way you have to actually put the bucket where that fits in. Yeah, I know the way you drop the back end. I know. I've tried to do it. My back is throbbing right now. Just leaning over like that. He don't spill a drop. That's why my liability insurance is so cheap because he hasn't spilled any yet. Corey's pointing out a spill. On a pad though. On the pad though. <laughs> So it's preventative, right? preventative maintenance. It's like you be known it's on the pad. <laughs> you can see they like to break each other's chops. We'll see the evidence of the spill. That's really not that bad, Corey. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. This is a union break. What do you got? Pop tart? Strawberry? Don't drink a monster Cherry. on an empty stomach. Oh yeah, you're a little. Ooh. He's jacked up. Everybody breaks away when the boss comes over. Well, <laughs> well, did I say something? It was you were talking about me? No, look. No, it worked. Oh. I don't know. I just felt a little awkward there. We just did the sign of the cross. Go 
look at that mic, see if you spilled anything. I mean, you can tell me anything you want to tell me. I mean, Christ is being a little baby over here. Why? He's what shaking. I already did the oh, whole... he's shaking from a calf can of monster. <laughs> the whole tiger loop. Drugs are bad, guys. Yeah, drugs are bad. That stuff's terrible. All right. <sighs> I feel like we're walking it's like, well, no, I, I mean, I'm just trying to get content for my, my 137 loyal viewers. That's what you do. I post my stuff within an hour, I get 137 views. And then, and then it dies off, Post. What can, what can we do? Or maybe what can you do for me, Post? Because you've given me all 500 of my subscribers. Am I begging? It's not right. Did you see the one, though? Where he slept, he slept in a culvert for 36 hours. You didn't see that? He built a little plywood platform, had his cooking, his heating, and he, he sat in there for 36 hours during the winter. Recent, Massachusetts. It's Culvert King. All you other guys are posers. Ain't nobody else going to do that. You do it for the love, for the love of the flow of H2O. I'm impressed, bro. I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. Mike, is this gonna get clean today? Huh? Is this getting clean today? Yeah. There's a process. You busting my chops on it. Okay, you take the balls. Good. It's looking good. I mean, do I have too many employees on this job? Yes. Have um, have we introduced the company? This is Craig. He's my second oldest. How long have you been with the company? June of 2005. 17 years. How many sick days have you had? None. I think once you had mono. I, I, know. Know. I know you didn't call him. We made you. No, I worked. You did? Yeah. That's a terrible father. Jammer. <laughs> That's pretty bad. And, and when I had it, it was in like 2012. It was just me and one guy doing all yeah. this work. Yeah, all right. I mean, so... And that's child abuse, actually. In a machine with no cab to be heated. All right, that's enough, enough. You, no, you made your point. No thumb to work. You've made your point. Sam, how long have you been with me? Sam's the only one. Oh, Corey's got a college degree. But Sam's my only son with a college degree. It was on and off. On and off for what? Six, years. ten years? 2014, so. Wow. Seven years on and off. Mikey, Sam's a football player. Corey's a football player. Craig is a football wrestler. Mikey, is a football wrestler. Mike, how long you been with me? Um... I mean, since birth, I know you've been with me, but... This is going to be year six. Six years, full time. So he joined the team right out of high school. Craig joined the team right out of high school. Sammy went to college. Corey, football. I, I coached Corey when he was seven years old. Scored my only touchdown against New, New Windsor. Windsor. Play number three. It was beautiful. Play number three. It was a sweep to the left butter. side. And team then we and then we beat that team in the playoff to win the championship. How many years ago was that? 2006 or 2006. 17 years. So he's been on and off with me just as long as the two boys, seven or eight years, right? Okay. So that's it. That's Tank Masters. That's a family-owned business. I got my daughter Krista, who's been on and off for what? 15 years. She used to be the office manager, and then she. Got married, started a family, and then I got Casey, who's the office manager, who's been with me at least seven years. So, that's the epitome of family-owned business. Tell your friends, subscribe, so I can reach my goal of a thousand. That I'll never say subscribe after I get a thousand. Promise. Because I hate when I see people telling me to smash the button and subscribe and all that other stuff. Mikey, how do you do? Good. We're, are we pad, we're padding that now? Already padded. That's padded? Yeah. So, hold that for me. I just want to explain. So when I, we do our installations, I never do a bottom feed like that. 
And here's one of the reasons why. If somebody accidentally walks by and kicks that, he'll break it. There's no way to stop 275 gallons of leaking out. Also, you saw all the sludge at the bottom. Where does it go? It goes right into that, which clogs it. If you, if you have to do a, a bottom feed, there's something that's called a drop sludge tube. It comes up three inches to allow the sludge to build up. But you still have the fear of kicking that and breaking it. That's why Mikey installs our drop tubes and we do it from the top down. That's two fun factoids. Craig is now doing another flare. Let's, let's see your flare, Craig. You wanna see perfection? Modesty is not his biggest feature. I'm gonna say it's gonna look just like Mikey's. Same thing. Same exact. So why is yours perfection? I don't know. Confidence. Confidence. It adds a couple percentage points. I hope it's split. There you have it. That's a flared fitting on a 3 8 OD line. And that's for what? The Tiger Loop inside? Yeah, I gotta like make a weird. Okay. We're making progress, folks. I know this is exciting at home. Brian's pet peeve. This is what it takes. This is it. That does not seem hard to do, folks. Everybody run outside or inside or in the basement. Look to see if you're a contractor. It took the three minutes it takes to paint that, to avoid the oxidation. And then your legs and top fittings all look orange. That's what separates us from the others. And that's right here. That's our bottom plug. That's what we use the bottom of the tank for. If it's got any water in it, you just unscrew that a little bit, three quarters, and the water will start to bleed out. And then just retighten it. That's what it's for. It's not for bottom feed. A lot of people put a firematic on that to make it bleed. You can still kick that and break it open. Um, and most of the time, if there is water in your tank, all you got to do is take the two inch plug off the top and suck it out from that way. Those bottom plugs, man, I've seen a lot of, a lot of spills occur from people kicking those. But they're, they still get installed and they still get improved by, uh, approved by local building inspectors. This looks like a problem waiting to happen. Let's just see what'll happen. That's it. And now 275 gallons leaks out. That, that was dramatic. No bottom feeds. This is the exciting part. It's kind of weird, but I love the fact that the tank I'm installing is now going to keep this family warm for the next 20 to 30 years. That's so cool. So we'll get that all set up. We'll get it leveled. Put any shims underneath if need be. We start to take our measurements and run our new pipe out. We'll flare that. We'll come in the back because I hate to see copper. We'll run it into the new duplex with Mikey's drop tube. Hey Craig, take me through your measuring. So first off, well we're gonna switch it up. What I mean? They had the they had the fill going through here. Right. We're gonna put the vent through here. Why? I'm gonna stand back here. Right. The fill needs to have a swing joint. So I need the fill to come to. The fill needs a swing. 
But I do see a lot of contractors that don't install swing joints. They can do what they want, but that's the wrong way. Okay. So because it, that's offset? Yeah, so then I'm going to do this to fill. When the swing joint allows you to get a pitch Correct. on the fill. Mm -hmm. So no oil just stays. So if you just came straight up and 90 it out, that's what they had? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that no, 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 no. They had, yeah. Yes, they did. And the, this had a 45. The vent had a 45. Right. So yeah, we're going to do the fill. Okay. That makes sense. So Mike is putting in the vent alarm sight combo gauge. And then you can see that the vent will come straight up and out. That only lets the air out of the tank as the oil man's filling it, so really don't need a pitch on that. But that does make sense with what he's saying. Uh, so now that we have an idea where this is all going, we can begin to drill for our baller. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes, sir. The installation of the Tiger Loop. That came out good. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go from the fill out. So. Already I saw Sam laying on the top of the tank, laying his arm down. Now we're going to catch him measuring his arm in there. Okay, so we're going to close. Somebody call on the girls. Doing the, the two-way. They do everything for the people. We should get the folks at, the, at home involved. How far is it going to be? The pipe that we have to cut. I think nobody saw that. <laughs> to go there out. Okay, we're gonna get the girls involved in this challenge. So Craig's calling them now. I'm watching you, watch you, watch you, watch me. I know. This is third time you said that. Yeah. I said it? Yeah. Okay, again, if you watch the video, you'd see what you do. There is Krista. Yes. She's my first. She's the oldest. She's the one I was explaining, my I daughter. I can't hear you. Okay, let's get Casey now, Craig. First time. They're this. together. I don't have to. Oh, you're not doing the double thing? We don't see Casey in the picture. Hold on. She's not there. Krista, walk next to Casey. I am, Craig. Because I've I never like done you. that. How do you do the two screen now with mom when she wasn't there? Right, how did you do I it? Did it? You called her. No, they mom. Krista and Casey. All, all right, so fine. Um, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you the tank. Go ahead, Craig. Show them the tank. Step over here, Craig. You can't determine distance from that angle. Turning the thing around. Die. We're looking for the distance from it coming up from here out out to here All right, Mike is putting on a standard six inch threaded nipple with a 90. There you go. He's stopping it absolutely perfect Sam is setting up the threader. What size is that? So that's going to be the riser for the. So he sets that in. He tightens it. Oh, he's cutting it. He marked that metal for the length that he wanted, and he's going to cut that pipe. <laughs> Slowly move, it just gives a quarter turn tighten. It's probably going to break on this one. Oh, yeah. no. It's going to break right now. There you go. All right, so we got our length, and now he's going to thread both ends of it. Put the threader back down. And now the 
machine and start to spit out oil. How far end do you normally thread? Two inches, I think it is. Two inches. Two inches. Two inches. Will it stop itself? Yeah. It, it falls right off this. Oh. I see. Measure. Okay. The answer is 49. 49 inches. I'm so off. 49 <laughs> inches. So we have a measurement of Sam at 46. No. Sam, Sam. Hold on. Craig Sam. was 51 and a half. You're gonna want to remeasure on that. <laughs> Why do we want to remeasure? It's close. It's Come close. Here. It's close. Well, we're calling for a remeasure, but you got to get the exact. Corey and Brian were 53 inches. Casey was 59. No. And you ready, Krista? Krista I was. I Krista was nine feet. <laughs> nine feet, almost the height of a basketball net. <laughs> That's the length of the garage, honey. Oh, oh, you, you thought it was going to go around, but then how were we going to close the garage door? Right. Yes, I was not, I wasn't. I know, you're very cute, though, but we appreciate your participating. <laughs> Hold on. We have a discrepancy here. It's 49. It's 49, so the winner is, Craig is the winner at 49 inches. By a half an inch over Sam's 46 inches. Okay. Congratulations. I don't like giving you... So go buy yourself an expensive lunch and it's on me. <laughs> Maybe the work that you've got to do there is the reason why they don't paint. Gonna get a little bit of its cup. We should have cleaned the damn water off of it. But we'll, we'll do a second coat. Second coat? Yeah. She's dripping. A little dry. A little dry? Yeah. All right. Right, Corey, good work. Corey has reached his 32 inch below grade. We'll now measure that and bring it up probably 48 inches out of the ground. We'll bring our bollard out here and we will cut the bollard. We'll begin to mix some concrete and we're finishing up. Guys are transferring the usable fuel, that little bit that was in it, back into the home so we can get the burner fired. Um, there's that new line. Watch out, Mikey. You see that new line that's installed right there? No more bottom feed, no more concern. Pipes painted inside here. It's looking good. What time is it? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10.22. What time did we get here? 
Seven forty-five. Done in three hours. Nice. Way to go, boys. Okay, we are ready to cut that pipe. Just basically the same principle as the, the cutter on the threader. This pipe has to be a four inch outside diameter and it's got to be filled with concrete. cut clean it up throw whatever paint we have on it and set it in start mixing concrete okay folks we are wrapping up here now Mike's finishing the touch up bollards installed painted final touch ups he's doing black pipe all painted Got our squitchings installed. He's actually going to put the sight gauge back on that. The burner is up and running. That's how you do it. That's a 275 install removal. 275 install with a bollard in a garage. Another fine job by Tank Masters Environmental. It was a great year last year appreciate you guys that are loyally watching continue to watch i'm not going to say what everybody else says but let's keep this going because it's kind of fun catch you on the next one